everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. I like I like doing literary events. Um, it's, it's a nice change of pace from a bunch of comedians. Uh, that's all I do now. Pretty much since I started doing comedy, I only hang out with comics, uh, which essentially means uh, that I hang out with assholes. Because uh, that's what we are. We're assholes. We really like that's how we show love to each other is by giving each other shit and saying horrible things to each other all the time. That's just our way of connecting. Um, and a lot of times, uh, my sex life and sexuality is a source of those jokes. Uh, and whenever straight male comics aren't making fisting jokes, uh, they'll do this. They'll be like, yeah! Uh, which is ridiculous because uh, most lesbians don't scissor. Uh, they just don't. Uh, I don't do it. My friends don't really do it. It's just not a part of the repertoire, really. I just did it. Like, and I actually, I had never done it before until like the third time someone did this to me. Oh, who's that? Someone excited about me talking about scissor. Uh, no, I've never done it. And finally, I'd gotten it so much, I, I went home to my girlfriend, and I was like, oh my god, we should totally try it. <laughs> Let's see what the hullabaloo is all about. Uh, and so we did. Uh, one sunny Sunday afternoon, we got naked, climbed into bed, and we scissored. Uh, and I don't know if it's because of, like, we approached it with like the giddy enthusiasm of two kids in vagina science class. I don't know if that had any effect, but it just didn't do anything for us at all. It just was not good. Uh, it wasn't bad either, it was just nothing. Like we might as well have stood on opposite sides of the room, literally doing that in each other. Just like, does that get it? Just not kidding. At all. And it was totally the most non-sexual thing in the world, too. Like, it was actually kind of cozy. Like, we stayed there for a while, surfed the internet, I think it was a good nap. For like 10 minutes. It just fucking wasn't anything at all. Didn't do it for us. And neither of us was disappointed, because we're both women. Like, we understand how the vagina works. And, like, the vagina requires a very particular and precise touch. Uh, and there is nothing less dexterous than the entire bottom half of another person's body. Like, there's nothing I fucking do. I might as well have just been headbutting her clit for two hours. It wasn't going to do anything. Oh. <laughs> Which I did later. Uh, much more effective. Much more effective. And like, I totally understand why straight men don't know when actual lesbian sex entails, but, uh, but they pretty much they use pornography as, as the base, um, which baffles me because since when is porn accurate of any kind of sex ever? If you think about, like, if I was to believe straight porn, I would have no idea how anyone gets pregnant because it seems like guys just ejaculate everywhere but the vagina. They're just like, face, face, face! Uh, on a foot one time. Vagina. <laughs> Ever. But I know it's not the way it always goes. I understand that. But lesbian sex is, lesbian porn is even less realistic than that because it's just a bunch of straight people making, well, the free stuff is just a bunch of straight people. We have to pay for the real lesbian porn because cat insurance and fucking sage cleansings. There's a lot of other <laughs> involved. But like the free lesbian porn is just it's a bunch of straight dudes in the room like, all right, let's figure this out. And even the actors, they don't even get real lesbian actors, it's just straight women, because yeah, you can tell, because they're like, oh I love this. Mm. And they have like, like a Wolverine manicures that no lesbian would let near their vagina ever. It's frightening. Like Watching two straight women pretend to be lesbians is like watching two racists speak fake Chinese. It's just <laughs> never close. I just walk away offended. <laughs> it's usually it's unusual that I started my set talking about sex. I don't talk about uh, my sex life a whole lot on stage. 
uh, because I feel like my clothing sexualizes me enough. <laughs> I want to send you guys into a frenzy! Or anything. I made an exception. Um, I actually, I'm very timid around the subject of sex. I'm, I'm, very, I'm a very private person. Um, and I never thought that I would be one to consider sex work, ever. Um, but my friend told me about this thing that sounds pretty fantastic, to be honest. Um, it's called a financial dominatrix. <laughs> and it's amazing, it's pretty much, it's that somebody hires you to call them and demand that they buy you shit and pay your bills. That's it. That's all, I can do that. I can totally, you don't have to get naked, no pictures, no touching anybody. Just like, mama needs a new sweater. That's some fucking Coles gift card. That's all it is. It's, and I can, like, I already look like I shouldn't be doing something like that. Like, I already look like a CPA, or like the manager of an independent bookstore. Like, I look like I can tell me to do something with money in some way. And that is the only line of sex work available to me, if I'm going to be honest with myself. Because, like, even if I wanted to be a stripper, uh, no straight dude wants to see this on stage. He's like... <laughs> he wants to see me take out these black dresses! A box of briefs! Like, I'm not going to fly in North Beach. Um, a phone sex operator because I have a very difficult time lying or fanning enthusiasm. So me as a phone sex operator would just be like, please tell me more about your penis. <laughs> oh, balls too! I can't wait! <laughs> In detail. <laughs> and like, I couldn't be an escort because no wealthy old white man wants to bring someone else in a tuxedo to a black tie event. <laughs> Not gonna impress anyone. It's interesting that this show has so many people leaving um, California. It's kind of sad. Uh, it is. I am moving to the East Coast um, for my career, which I have to do. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited about change and new beginnings and stuff like that. But I'm already dreading the move itself, uh, which is ridiculous because moving is not that bad anymore, if you think about it objectively. Like, if you think about it, ages ago, moving meant you were like, oh, hey guys, uh, so we have to leave town because everyone here wants to kill us and our people. Uh, then you get on a covered wagon or a ship and it would take forever and people would get dysentery and die and new babies would be born along the way. So we just end up you in this strange land, just like, Hey kids, looks like it's just us in this equally shitty place where we have to start all over again. Like now, when we complain about moving, we're really complaining about luxuries. If you think about it, like nowadays, everyone's like, oh, I have so much stuff. I'm going to have to rent an air-conditioned van to get it all in. in the middle of the night to run, run, get on this boat. <laughs> and it takes months and you arrive and some dude's just like, oh, hey, uh, so your old neighbor scavenged all your shit and your wife died, but she left you this. And they just hand you a newborn baby like, yay. I'll see you in the potatoes. Why are we complaining? Like, and you don't even have to look that far away from yourself, or that far back, to find horrible moving stories. Like, my father came here to this country from Cuba via a year of homelessness in Spain at the age of 14. But I'm like, I don't like moving boxes! <laughs> what about this trail of tears? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And I've been thinking, I'm gonna miss San Francisco a lot, and I've been thinking about uh, my favorite Bay Area moments recently, and I think my favorite right now is, uh, it happened this past Halloween, um, this past Halloween I dressed up as uh, Robin, Boy Wonder. Uh, it was amazing. It was my favorite outfit. Not even costume. Like, if I could wear that shit right now, I would. Um, it was amazing. I don't know what it is about a cape that just makes you feel awesome about life. Like that whole week, I was just running everywhere. Like, I gotta get shit done! Let me! It was amazing! It was the best thing ever! And that week, that, so that weekend, that Friday night of, of Halloween, um, I, I went to a party and I was coming back that night and I, I got to BART and on the BART platform there was this dude just passed out on the floor, just totally blackout drunk. Um, and I don't know uh, what came over me, if it was the costume or what, but right away I was like, is anyone with this man? <laughs> People not ignoring me were like, no, we're not with him. So he was alone, I uh, assisted out, he was by himself, so I go over to him and I, I kind of shake him awake. And I'm like, hey, hey, dude, are you all right? Are you cool? Uh, super confused. Um, and at which point I realized that he looks Latino. And so I asked him again in Spanish. I'm like, ¿Estás bien? ¿Cuál tren? ¿Cuál línea? Uh, way more confused at that point. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? But he managed to get out. He's like, peace bird. Peace bird, baby boy. <laughs> I'm like, cool. Go back to sleep. Uh, I'll get you. I'll wake you when your train comes. And it does, and I, I wake him up again, and the guy is just so far gone, he can't even stand, he can't even walk on his own. So I have to like lift him, put his arm over my shoulder, and literally I have to carry this huge guy into the BART train, and I, I set him down in his chair, and I, I back up to leave, and he goes, uh, he goes, thank you, thank you, Robin. <laughs> I didn't like go out of my way to make like because I'm not really Dick Grayson. I'm not actually gonna fucking do that. Uh, nobody's paying me. I don't have a millionaire uh, paying me to do that. And so, um, so I didn't ride with him. But but I'm not totally heartless, and I'm I'm usually not a religious person. Uh, but as I walked off the train, uh, I was like, please, God, make sure this guy gets home okay, and then make sure somebody wakes him at his stop. Uh, and please make sure he's dressed as Batman. You can do that. I totally believe in you again. Uh, I can make that happen. Uh, I, I like to imagine the guy waking up the next morning and just like kicking down his door to his family and his roommates and just being like, superhero! you guys uh, with something a little different. Uh, I have a confession. Uh, and it is that despite this adorable demeanor, uh, I am actually filled with hate. <laughs> and, and I feel like as I get older, I need to turn that into something positive. Um, so I've actually written some hate poetry. <laughs> uh, I'm to share with you all tonight. Uh, so this one, is called, Really? White People? <laughs> there it goes. I just passed a stroller with a dog in it. <laughs> That's all that one is. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean, 